Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessings to you. Greetings to everybody tonight. Proverbs chapter 22 says this. Look what Proverbs chapter 22 says. Proverbs chapter 22. <laughs> Saints, you ever seen old people when they get remote control? When I say old people, I mean like they're 1,058. I'm not talking about none of y'all on here. All right. You ever gave a, 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 a dinosaur? <laughs> you ever gave a dinosaur some type of technology and they couldn't work it? You wrong for having your grandpa on Snapchat. That's wrong. That's that's criminal activity. That's it's criminal activity. You ever try to get your 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 grandpa Thompson? Take take come on, Snapchat me that dentures. Snapchat me that dentures. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24 says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. <laughs> Make no friendship. <laughs> with... Make no friendship. With an angry man. <laughs> and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Do you know what this text is telling you here? It says. To don't make a friendship. Meaning. Don't you know what friendship means that um, you're influenced by? You take on the same like characteristics. You're in agreement with responses. Here's what I want you to catch in this text that you that you want to see without wisdom. Is that what this text is telling you? That don't make friendship with a angry man because people that are ruled by their emotions destroy promotion people that's ruled by emotion they miss what they're supposed to learn they miss what they're supposed to receive they miss where they're supposed to go man these necklaces is heavy boy Proverbs chapter 22. Saints, let me, dear son, let me just tell you this. Woman be laying their foot hurt for a time, but when women get comfortable, they take their foot up. Woo, woo. <laughs> be out there, they be chime on. Boom, 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 boom. And, and, and God be just laughing because the foot, the foot be up in the air like that. They be trying to walk in, in what, what's that man? R Rocky Balboa or whatever his name is. That movie be going off in the back while they walking. They were walking the hills. And, and, and that movie going off, in the, the song going off in the back. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and when, 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 when she get comfortable, she take them hills off boy. Says I got a wisdom door from that. That don't ever get so comfortable that you take your anointing off in front of people. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't ever get so comfortable that you take off your wisdom. That you take off your discernment. Don't get undressed. Uh, 
around people that have lived a life of nakedness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a wisdom, though. That just came to me. Look at verse 25. Learn, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to your soul. I'm going to read this again. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go. So don't go with people that are led by their feelings. Because there's no God in that equation. Like saints, have you ever noticed that people that operate by common sense don't be having no sense? <laughs> Saints, do you know that I have been known for asking people in customer service questions that made them look stupid? And then when they realized that they were stupid, they didn't. They... Huh? Saints, you ever ordered something? You get confirmation of what you ordered? And then. You talk to somebody in customer service and they act like you didn't order it. They act like you trespassing. They act like you out of whack. Like saints, let me just share this with you. Like I, I was involved in a business deal, right? And um, I had business with someone, right? And they sent somebody that they thought that they trusted to convey a message to me. And they didn't, the person that they sent was disqualified from my level. So when the person was talking to me, they was asking dumb stuff. So what I did instead of cussing them out, because I, I hate stupid, I hate stupid. Real bad, boy. That's one of my pet peeves. When I meet stupid people, I'm like, I said, um, how about this? Um, I'm not going to talk to you no more. It's not because I don't like you or hate you or nothing like that, but I almost said something to you. I don't want to hurt your feelings. So I'm, a, I'm either going to fire that person from dealing with me in this transaction because if they think that you was their best pick to talk to me to convey a message then i'm starting to think that they stupid too so i might cut the deal all the way because if you talk like ariana <laughs> And I got to do some adjusting to deal with you. And if I feel like I'm stuck with you. And I'm trying to take care of the board of my bills. So Proverbs chapter 20, 22, verse 25 says, learn none of his ways. Because if you learn his ways, you shall get a snare to your soul. Now, saints, I want to talk to you about this for one minute. How if you study the wrong people, the wrong person, you will invite a demon to harass your soul. So that your productivity towards God would die. I want you to hear me. That if you study the wrong person, you could take on a spirit that that person has and then it'll terminate your fruitfulness towards God. And that happens a lot of times. People lose their fruitfulness because of who they study. Let me just say this. 
If you a single woman, you can learn from a married woman. But if you a married woman, you shouldn't learn from a single woman. If you a single man, you can learn from a married man. But if you are a married man, you shouldn't learn from a single man. Now, I want to say this to you as well. If you broke, you can learn from a wise man. But if you're a wise man, don't learn from those that are broke. People that are married often hang around people that are single. Do, 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 do. And then there's another aspect. You can learn from married people that's not happy. <laughs> Saints, have you ever been in the presence of two married people and they were just arguing? You ain't know what to do. Then they try to involve you like, bro, get your daggone hands off me like I... I'm not going to get involved with you and Cletus. You know why? Because at the end of the day, Cletus going to be, he going to be inside somewhere and it's not the grocery store. That's what I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> well, it might be the grocery store. I got to switch the terminology. It's not going to be the pharmaceutical. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at the end of the day, I'm not getting involved with <laughs> It's not going to be a pharmaceutical. I had to switch up because it's 2020. I don't know people. Some people not working right. They're not. Don't hang around people that will hang you if you trying to grow in another place of self-control with God. Don't hang around people that will hang you if you're learning submission towards God. And you don't want to be around company that contradicts the curriculum. You caught that? Don't be around company that contradicts your curriculum. You have to know your semester so that you can see mess that will interfere with it. Oh my taco shit. Ora raman de le becoste fala da va capara da son de le vos. Ah ya 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 ya. You got to know your semester so that you can see mess that's going to interfere with you learning that material. Because if you take a note write this down. Information is the beginning of transformation. So God has to inform you before he can transform you. Information is the beginning of transformation. So the Lord has to inform you and give you an info system. If that info system 
is being combated by people that you call your peers. Your peer shouldn't bring you into your rear. <laughs> I got to keep on going. I ain't going to stay there. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. Verse 24 says, make no friendship with angry man and with a furious man thou shalt not go. What is telling you that a furious man, an angry man, they are operating in things that destroy favor, destroy anointing, destroy divine opportunities. Look what it says here in verse uh, 25. Lest you learn his ways and get a snare to your soul. A snare to your soul means that now your mind is being developed in demonicism. Satanism. It means that your mind is being mentored by evil and corruption and destruction. So it says... Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to your soul. That means that now your mind, your will, your emotions are being impacted by evil spirits. Wow. And this explains why conversations with people that are not operating in the same anointing that you have. That's why your feel like you lost all after you conversate with them. Now you know why that happens to you. You'll feel like you hit a block in the spirit. And you'll actually feel raped more than you'll feel revelatory. You'll feel raped instead of like a revolutionary. Like you won't feel like you caused the revolution to change. You'll feel like you got raped. Like you lost a part of your dignity. Ah, uh, I want to give a, oh, I want to, I, I want to get this right. Yeah, sacola solo. Nejandeles. What was the bald head son? Let me find the bald head son, the Lamar Odom. Let me find George Foreman Grill in this text. And Ham, the father, saw the nakedness of his father. Don't expose yourself to hams. Hams. No ham, no cheese, no <laughs> No ham, no cheese, no turkeys. <laughs> Moving along strong. Moving along very strong. Moving along super strong. Moving along strong in the Lord. <laughs> Moving along overcoming the strongholds. Moving along with strong faith. <laughs> Saints, why does Joe Biden look like, why, why does it look like if you leave your child around him, like he'll start rubbing your child neck? Like, please, we don't want nobody from Obama camp in office. Like, we don't want Michelle. It might be Michael. I think that's the maiden name, the birth name, Michael. We don't want Michael. We don't want Barack. 
We don't want to... Saints, don't you hate when, when white people try to come into office and then they try to talk about their black agenda, how they going to help the black? Come on, man. Like, me, even if we come from black people, we still don't want you to help the blacks because something wrong with black people. Saints, if I be honest with you, when I get around certain black people, I clutch stuff. I'm not talking about materialism. I'm talking about defense methodisms. Because they weird. I was at the gas station the other day. Now, this is a true story. And, and this is a true story. And that, um, now nah, I ain't going to share that because it's, it's too explicit. La da 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 But after the person was sat down, then I told him, I said, You need Jesus. You know what they was telling me? They grew up Muslim. Islam. Yeah, but Muslims can't fight. <laughs> Why you think they got a bomb on the back? A Muslim person can't fight? That's why you think that a fala fala they, they come at you with all them weird phrases to scare you off. Blessed be God. Saints, I was thinking about it. I couldn't live in Iran because some place is just known for smelling like armpits. <laughs> it's not just Iran either. There's many other places that are known for smelling like armpits and stuff. Say, I'm talking about people that if you in a service, you won't even tell nobody to lift their hands. Come on, everybody, pitch your hands down. That's not how we worship in here. <laughs> Pit them down. All right? Pit them down. Nah, I'm not, I don't care if you're talking about hallelujah. Pit them down. All right? You know it's bad when the angels start passing out. <laughs> Says, you know how I many times angels had to tap each other? Hey, man, hey. Philip, wake up, wake up. Hey, man, listen, I passed out because they, they don't want to take no shower. Man. man, wake up, man. We got two more hours, then we're going to leave. We got two. <laughs> yeah, they about to fall back in sin and everything. They about to fall back into sin and everything. We just got two more. We got two more hours and then we done. We about to go back to the Father's. <laughs> we about to smell the frankincense and myrrh in heaven. <laughs> I want to deal with the aspect of the Lord actually loves giving to you and is obsessed with giving to you. So he wants to train you how to become obsessed with giving to him. The Lord is so obsessed with giving to you that he wants you to become obsessed with giving to him. And there's a, there's a supernatural relationship that the person that gives to God receives because God finally sees himself, the sower that he is operating through that person. So, so 
God really gets impressed when he sees himself as a sower flowing through you towards him. Now, I want you to, I want you to see this. That God is obsessed with you having the top quality of everything. He's obsessed with you having the top quality of everything. The Lord is obsessed with you having the top quality of every materialistic thing on earth. The nicest clothes, the nicest shoes, the nicest purses, the nicest houses, the nicest cars, the nicest jewelry, the nicest hairstyle, the nicest colognes, the nicest perfumes. But here's what happens. There is a path to unlock this realm of King Jesus. And you have to become obsessed with sowing into him. Once you become obsessed with sowing into King Jesus. Now he has permission to release his obsession of sowing into you. He often waits for someone in the earth that will mount up with wings as eagles to take on his characteristics of honor because God really honors everyone before you honor him. He honors everyone because honor represents investment and investment in things that are necessities. It's an investment of things that are necessities. So guess what? You honor God because he first honored you. If you're a sower, you're sowing because you was imparted. It was imparted unto you the anointing of sowing. That God was doing to you for years. Now saints. Imagine people. That lived for years. And never tapped into the sowing. That God has for them. Because remember. The sowing. That. God has been doing to you. Before you ever sowed into him. Was supposed to produce a repentance. Remember the goodness of God. Is to bring men into repentance. That means that there. There are realms of investment. That God had. Given to you years ago. That was sent. To take your mind. Into investing into him. Wow. 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 Saints are you catching this? Seven years ago, God was investing in you in the year 2013. And while he was investing in you, you were supposed to repent and invest in him at that same level. But you didn't catch it yet. You, 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 you didn't catch it yet. So, so. Five years ago, six years ago, the Lord was investing into you, sowing into you, and it was supposed to unlock your sowing, but you didn't catch it yet. So watch this. When you do start sowing, stop rushing God, because he's not going to take as long as you. But you have to respect the fact that sometimes the speed that you are demanding was actually placed in your hands years ago. Uh, but at that time, you was in a relationship with somebody that was taking away your attention. Uh, you had plans that was taking away your attention. Oh, this is going to be kind of shocking. You had children that was taking away your attention. 
Wow. Hallelujah. We praise you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We glorify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the beautiful King of kings and Lord of lords. Mighty Savior. Mighty Savior. Mighty Savior. Praise God. Praise God. So, so saints, the Lord didn't just start dealing with you now. Imagine how years ago you ignored the drawings of God. So watch this. When you become attentive to his drawings, you have to humble yourself. Praise God. Praise God. You have to humble yourself. Because all that time where you ignore the drawings. All those times where you muted those drawings. You muted it out. You muted the voice of God. You muted it out. And so when you finally get on the right course, you got to humble yourself not to rush God, not to manipulate King Jesus, but also realize, wow, I had you waiting all this time and you've been wanting to give me a house. But I didn't have house obedience. I didn't have house focus. Well, I was serving, praise God. I was serving. I was serving in the house of the Lord. No servanthood produced delay. No divine servanthood produced delays. I'm going to say this again. No divine servanthood produced delays. So you get delayed because you serving at the wrong location. You get delayed because you're serving the wrong leader. You get delayed because you're serving in the wrong city, in the wrong organization, in the wrong geography. How many of you all know that you can take a sub divine weapon or a divine seed and sow it into demonic soil? And so the seed is really the word of God as well. So when the seed of the word is planted in you and you go plant that word because the word says serve the Lord with gladness and you go serve the Lord with gladness according to your own understanding. Now you have planted a divine seed, which is serve the Lord with gladness. That's the seed of the word. But you have planted it in the wrong ground. And that's what happens so many times. You can submit yourself to the wrong leader. You can serve the wrong, the wrong instructions. You can release divine seed into demonic pathways, demonic grounds. Now, saints, the fact that God told Moses you are standing on holy ground, it shows you that there are different 
types of grounds. He told him, you standing on holy ground because God is saying this ground is the ground that I own. This is the ground in which I am the master over. This is the ground in which I occupy. I bring multiplication in this ground. I bring wisdom and growth and strength and deliverance and liberty and hope and life and justice and peace and happiness and increase and wealth and riches in this ground. So watch this people of God. Moses had to say yes to God until he was a, uh, uh, in order for him to access holy ground. Saints, I'm telling you that when you start listening to God with your finances, that you step into the financial holy ground. This is where the Holy Spirit becomes the source of your supply, the source of your abundance. This is where you receive the encounter with El Shaddai. This is where you have the experience with the God of plenty. Now, saints, I want you to see this. A lot of times the Holy Spirit He give you glimpse, a glimpse of what you're supposed to do years before. And because you don't got enough word of God, because you're not meditating, because you're not praying in the Holy Ghost, uh, because you're not thankful, you have the knowledge, but the knowledge don't have you. My. You, 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 you got the weapon, but the weapon don't got you yet. Saints, I come to tell you that you can have the anointing, but the anointing don't have you. That realm of you is not operating yet in what has been exposed to you. Yeah. 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 Um, you can have the anointing of victory and still act like a vagabond. You can have the anointing of wealth and still act like a fool. You can have the anointing of joy and still act sad. Hola soro ko dia sakole. Les joto costeles. Zestolo vosete la katata. You can have the anointing of confidence and still act jealous. Ha! Ah. You know jealousy is really deformity in your identity. If you take a note write that down. Jealousy is deformity in your identity. What I'm telling you is don't just have the anointing. Let the anointing have you. Give yourself over to, to watch this. And I want to show you this. When I say anointing, I'm not just dealing with power. Because you heard that the anointing is power. I'm dealing with the doctrine that King Jesus is teaching you in the season you're in. In the time you're in, in your life right now, let what you're being taught become a part of you. Take it in your innermost being and let it be a part of your decision making. Let it be a part of your company. Let it be a part of your meditation, your memory, how you see things, how you talk, how you walk, how you operate, how you sow and how you reap. See, some people have a sowing anointing, but you haven't let the sowing anointing have you. That's why you, 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 you often hold all type of sessions where you're worried about your life. Because a sowing anointing don't got you yet. You got a sowing anointing, but the sowing anointing don't got you. Now, 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 and so when that happens, the sowing anointing don't have you, you'll, you'll, you'll become a, a, a hoarder. Ah. Uh, 
Ah, your horn. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Your horn, your hold on, your, your hide. Horn, hold on and hide. Because you have a sawing anointing. The sawing anointing don't have you. But see when you. Have given yourself over to the sawing anointing. Now. You start sowing From the place of boldness. Focus. Worship. True worship. True worship. Mean that there's no false motives operating in you. It's true worship because you're not hiding from God. You're not holding back from God. You're not hoarding from God. You're willing to give him all that he is requiring of you every moment, every day, with all that you possess. You go from hoarding from God to helping God. You go from holding from God to holding God. See, there, there, when you holding from him, there's a distance. But when you holding him, there's a dynasty. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got to include some wisdom doors in there. When you holding from God, there's a distance. When you holding God, there's a dynasty. Saints, here's how it happens in the spirit. What you let go of to the Lord shows the Lord that you want to hold on to him. Wow. Wow. Saints, and, and I live as a sower. I'm a master sower. I'm a genius sower. So... This not hypocrisy. I saw all the time. Wow, 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 wow. Le de visi anda la vaca pala de yo socore des. Rapa sande de vos se kele de. Narro. And, and. Every time the Holy Spirit put money in my hands, I sow more. I'm going to reveal this to you. I, well, should I reveal this? Because I don't want to lose my reward. Hey, I solo koshe kele siya. Ah. Okay. Every day from morning to night, I sold no less than a hundred dollars. And I don't mean every week, I mean every day. And guess what? Some days I can sow a thousand dollars. And then hop right back in and sow a hundred dollars again. Every day in rotation. So imagine this. You sold a hundred dollars in morning, a hundred dollars an hour, or a hundred dollars more, a hundred plus. And not even a hundred is 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 hit seeds. And then imagine while you flowing like that, you drop a thousand. Then you start sowing in the thousand. In my lifetime, I've already given millions of dollars to the Lord already.
there was an old geezer from Ebenezer trying to argue. <laughs> I said, I'm 27 years old. There's not really much to argue about. There was two dinosaurs that knew you. <laughs> Receiving the sowing anointing in the morning and the night. Receiving a sowing anointing. Because people of God, the more God empower you to sow, the more he's empowering you to change your whole life. Now, saints, the seed not only touch your finances, it touches your health, it touches your relationships, it touches your progress, and it touches the conversations that God will have with people on your behalf in the future. So the seed lets God schedule conversations with people on blessing you. The seed causes God causes God to pick someone to create your happiness. I received the sown anointing on my life. I received the sown anointing on my life. Receiving the sown anointing on your life. God actually supplying you the device that's going to change everything and make your life real nice. The seed is the device that makes your life real nice. The seed is the device that makes your life real nice. The luxury of the father is unlocked through sowing. The luxury of the father, luxurious angels, angels of luxury, angels that pitch you in the highest level of life are connected to the seed. A sowing man is not an average man. You can't compare a sowing man to an average man. Sowing men got different abilities. They got different mindsets, different angels, different graces, different glories, different wisdoms, different understanding, different favor, different authority, different dominion. A sowing man got different words, declarations, decrees, abilities, mantle. They got different mantles. When you are a sowing man, God will talk to you face to face. When you are a sowing man, God will talk to you even when your eyes close. You'll hear conversations with the Father. You'll hear him talking to you. You'll see him walking with you. You'll be face to face with God. Sowing activates face to face conversation with the Lord. That's what sowing does. Sowing breaks the spirit of confusion off your life. It breaks the spirit of confusion. You're not going to be confused no more when you're sowing. And remember what I said, not just having a sowing anointing, but letting the sowing anointing have you. Some of you all give them boring behind seeds. You just give boring money. Your money all boring. You don't know how to sow. You just give money just because, oh, I just want to blend in with everybody. I just want to do what's being taught. Praise God. I just want to do what's being taught. Listen, the, the seed is a portrait of what you're saying to God. So, so you with a woman, you're going to give her the same stroke? That's what's going to happen if you're if you a man like that. Also, you, you, you a woman, you're going to give that man the same pleasure? You're going to give him the same help? Well, that's how you're going to operate as a woman. Sowing, it will expose how well you 
manage creativity. If you can't please God with your sowing, don't think that you can please a man. Don't think that you can please a woman. Your sowing will expose your capability to birth satisfaction in someone you're assigned to. If you can't make God happy, God is very easy to be made happy. As a matter of fact, God is the easiest person to be made happy. The easiest person for you to please is the spirit of God. If you can't give the spirit of God what he's looking for. If, I, I, if you can't give, I, my God, if you can't give the spirit of God what he's looking for, you surely, the spirit of God is the easiest person you can please in this life. My yoke is easy. The easiest person you can serve is the spirit of the Lord. Sowing is where it starts. Oh, I want to get closer to God. I want to know the Lord. Oh, I want him to use me. Oh, I want him. Shut your non-sowing self up. God don't have to hear nobody pray them type of prayers. If you are a sower, God will anoint you to heal the sick. God will anoint you to raise the dead. God will anoint you to call those things that be not as though they were. All the earth will be subject to you when you sow it. And when you speak something in the atmosphere, it'll manifest on earth. You don't got to beg God for nothing when you're a sower. God will come to you and say, would you like this? I know that this bit on your heart. Would you like this? Saints, I want to say this. The seed make God do a heart checkup on you. He study your heart. Your heart becomes the teacher of God. Your desires become the information system of God when you're sowing. When you're sowing, God start doing an insight investigation on your soul, your heart, to find out what you've been longing for. And that's what he begins to offer it to you. You don't even got to pray for it. When you're sowing, you don't got to pray for half the stuff that people pray for God for. God will come to you and say, hey, I've been nosy. I've been looking inside of your heart and your heart said that you want this to happen. Your heart said that you want this to take place. You want to possess this. You want to have this. Well, here I am. I come to bring it to you. When do you want it? Today, tomorrow, tonight, right now. When? Ten years from now. When do you want it? When? Ah, when? Ah, when? Ah, when? Do, oh my God! When do you want it? That's why a sower's life. Nobody can judge a sower because God gives the sower what they want. You can get mad. Your big head cousin can get mad. Your big head family can get mad. Your big head sister, your brother, your daddy, your mother, your child, your daughter, your son, your auntie. Everybody can get mad. They can't stop God from bringing to you what belongs to you when you're sowing. God will bring to you what you've been asking for when you're sowing. He'll bring your thought life into manifestation from a seed. The seed take your thought life and bring it into manifestation. The seed take your thought life and bring it into manifestation. How could you be close to God and you don't sow? You crazy? Why you think Lucifer wanted to stop Adam from sowing? Because Lucifer wasn't no sower. Lucifer wanted to stop Adam from sowing because Lucifer wasn't sowing. So what you think going to happen to you when you're not sowing? You think God got you close to him? You think that you're a friend of God? I am a friend of God. Listen, you tell me how many times you hear God talking to you with wisdom when you're not sowing. 
you 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 gotta do way more when you're not sowing. You got up there, beg God, oh Lord, please show me, please show me, please, please help me, please, Lord, I need you. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me of my sin. You gotta do that all the time. But when you're sowing, there's an open heaven over your life. You can sow a seed and talk to God, and it feel like you you and Him had the deepest conversation ever. You're not sowing, you try to talk to God. You see how much you got to fool yourself. You got to deceive yourself. Oh, I hear the Lord talking to me. You ain't got no joy. You ain't got no peace. Because that's a false relationship. Your depths is a revelation of how much you have stolen from God in the past. It's a revelation to give you an idea of how much you have stolen from God in the past. An idea. Because it's not even the full amount. Your debts reveal to you how much you have disrespected God in your former life. Did you catch what I just said? Your former life. Because you, men, you live many lives on this earth. When they say that you are a new creation, that's another life. But then when you learn revelation, you that's another life. How many of you all know that when you become a new creation and when you learn revelation and when you operate in demonstration, these are all different lifestyles. OK, when you learn sowing is a lifestyle. Uh, when you start sowing is another life. When you're patient in sowing is another life. When you're refusing seed blocking demons, it's another life. When you are guarding yourself from non-sowers, it's another life. And when you start sowing bigger money, it's another life. A sower has many lives. You have many lives that God give you as a sower. You go from sparingly sowing, you're giving God $5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you start giving God, you start giving God the tithe. Then you start giving God a little, uh, you add on a little bit more. And then you start feeling the strength of God come on you. Why? Because that's the Holy Ghost encouraging you to let yourself be given over to the sowing anointed. You find yourself start sowing amounts that you never thought that you would sow. And now you have being crowned with the glory realm of seed sowing. The glory realm, the apostolic sowing anointing. The Jesus sowing anointing. And then when you get to the Jesus sowing anointing, we step into the Jesus reaping anointing. There's levels of reaping. You reap a little favor there. You reap a little help from somebody there. You reap a little promotion at your job. You reap protection from danger. You reap things. And, and then, then you, start, you start growing up in your reaping. Now your reaping start yielding big harvests. Why? Because you grew up in sowing. You entered into a new lifestyle as a sower. You refused to sow. Out of your fears and your needs. Now you're sowing out of your worship. Out of your willingness. Out of your cheerfulness. Out of your expectation. Now you're reaping. It goes in alignment with the level that you have entered into in your sowing. So that's why I said if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. Because now your sowing has gotten big. Now your harvest get big. And the biggest harvest that you receive is that your mind is one with God. Never forget what I tell you. Never forget what I tell you. Never forget what I tell you. Because saints, everything that we have on earth, the Lord will let us enjoy it on earth. But the only thing we're going to take from this earth is the mind that we have come into with the Lord Jesus Christ.